All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Joshua's Generation, a podcast ministry. My name is Bryce James, and alongside with me today, I have our brand new co-host. She's also serving as the assistant to the president, and that is none other than Miss Kayla Williams. Kayla, thank you for joining us this evening. Hello. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. No problem. No problem. Now, for those of us who do not know, who is Kaylin Williams? I am a freshman at Oakwood University. I come from Detroit, which is part of the Lake Region Conference. And I am very excited and happy to be at Oakwood. I do have passion for ministry, and I want to make sure that my life it does revolve around God. Okay. Awesome, 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 awesome. So um we are beginning a new series and it's titled the book of james and we're going to start with the first chapter book of james chapter one so if you have your bibles uh your ipads your tablets um your cell phones just take some notes and uh, we're going to dive right into it but before we do we're going to invite the holy spirit into our midst father we love you we appreciate you we ask that as we dive into your word we ask that your Holy Spirit may be with us and your Holy Spirit uh, may guide us and help us to understand what we're reading in Jesus Christ's name, amen. All right, so the first part of this lovely, lovely chapter, it begins with saying, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Uh, it says, James chapter one, uh, it says, this letter is from James, a slave of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm writing to the 12 tribes, Jewish believers scattered abroad. Greetings. Uh, verse two says, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. This was an interesting way to start off a chapter. So the first question that I have is, how important is it for us as Christians to embrace trouble and use it as an opportunity to minister? I would say we could use Paul as an example for this. I remember when I was younger, I was taught that things happen when the devil is trying to discourage you. So for example, for me, when everything will be going well, how silly this may sound. When everything's going well and it didn't seem like there was a problem, I would think, am I doing the right thing because I'm not having any trials or tribulations? And then when I would start to have them, then I was like, okay, maybe I'm doing something right and something's trying to discourage me. You know, that might sound silly, but you you see where I'm coming from, right? Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, it's definitely important for me personally to use um, trials and tribulations as an opportunity because you don't know who's watching you. Um, there's one thing my parents always taught me is you never know what impact you can have um, by people watching you. And no matter what troubles you have, it can be, you can have like a negative response to it. And then what message are you sending um, to people who may come to Christ? I'm not saying that trying to brag, but you can be the make or break for someone uh, coming to Christ. And by your actions, by your response to trouble can be a make or break. Um, the next part says, uh, verse five, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking, but when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. How important do you think it is for our faith to be in God and in God alone? I mean, that's the number one thing that we're supposed to do as far as Christians, but we all do fall short at times, sometimes because of impatience. Sometimes it's just because we're worried about the wrong thing and we're forgetting that God's bigger than all of that, that God's bigger than COVID because I know somebody need to hear that. Amen, amen. All right. But I know that the most important thing we can do, no matter what happens, even if we only have a little bit of faith, is to always keep some faith even though we should have nothing but faith in God. God's not like a human. He hasn't disappointed you. He did what he felt was best for you. You may not understand that, 
but he knows better than we do amen that's a word right there that is a word uh god is bigger than COVID. that question i have we're kind of going on the same lines um we are dealing with the point uh verse uh, verse 7 says, such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord if their loyalty is divided. And the question I had posted uh, simply was, why is it important for our loyal? Why is it important for us to not have divided loyalty? And um, it goes back, I believe, to a parable Christ was uh, speaking on. He says, no man can serve two masters. Even you, either you love one and hate the other or you hate one and you love the other. You can't ever have both and what what's your input on that i think we all have something that makes us try to be loyal to two things like for example it could be gluttony it could be lust every time you decide to either you know do something like i don't know i guess inappropriate thoughts or watch a certain thing you're not supposed to be doing rather than praying about it and focusing on god you are choosing that over god which i know may be easy to say but it's much harder than we do appear make it appear to be so we shouldn't judge those who are struggling because i know it's is the battle is much harder than it will appear to anybody outside of it like if you decide to smoke a cigarette instead of quitting if you decide to continue sexual acts or something you know it's always hard yeah yeah I, I i agree with that it's definitely um hard especially in this day and age um where there's so many other influences there's so many um false teachers there's so many false prophets there's so many um avenues that are set to distract uh, one's mind um from christ and like you said, you know, it could be smoking, you know, it could be drinking, drugs. And these are problems that we see. Um, we see this, unfortunately. And the true reality of it is that in divide, divided loyalty, no one's satisfied. So always remember that. Um, we're going to keep moving down the line. Um, verse 12 says, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Um, you can kind of find a synopsis of this verse uh, in the book of Revelation. And how important is it for us to remember this promise? I believe it's the same importance as reading the Bible for ourselves. We can't just take people's words on what a verse says, what the verse means. You have to read it for yourself because it's the same as keeping your relationship with God. Just like you have a friend. If you have a friend, you wanna to talk to them every day, right? Yeah. So you shouldn't go a day or at least once or twice a day, you should be praying. Because when you feel hurt, if your friend never called you, how could you keep a relationship with them, you know? Yeah. And how can you be aware of this promise if you didn't read about this promise. People say a lot of things are in a Bible. It wasn't until I got older when I decided to read a Bible, then it's like, okay, that's not in there. That's not in there. Jesus didn't say that. Jesus actually said this, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like for example, for one of the things that he, te he teaches us how to pray, especially in the New Testament, it has been repeated multiple times where he shows us exactly how we should pray. And that sometimes it's unnecessary and people do it for attention when they pray extensively yeah. for a long amount of time and the thing is that sometimes we want ourselves glorify and to feel and sound righteous where we don't give that much attention to God and we forget that that's who this is about you know yeah. and just like for the promise for us to remember this we need to stay in our word we need to stay in prayer we need to survive surround ourselves with people that will support that idea and help us stay focused on that as well i, I think you kind of sparked another point where you said uh, surround yourself with people um kind of with the same mindset with the same goal you can have a certain a uh, goal that you're trying to attain you can have something that you're trying to do you can say hey i'm trying to restrain from this 
um, I'm trying to be more healthy. If you're not surrounding yourself by people who will support you and encourage you, then you're, you're looking uh, at, at the wrong friends. You're looking for the wrong friends. It's especially important in your Christian walk where you're trying to get to a certain level. You're trying to get to a certain goal. If you don't have people who are in your corner and people who not only will support you, but will also sit you down and say, hey, you know, um, you kind of went about this the wrong way. Um, here's where the Bible says, and they'll take you back to the Bible. And now that they'll pray with you, they'll encourage you. But if you don't have those certain friends, then you're, you're looking um, in the wrong place. And you're, trust me, you may not get to that goal um, you want to get to. Uh, verse 16 says, don't be misled, my brothers and sisters. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God, our father, who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. He chose to give birth to us by giving his true word, by giving us his true word. And we out of all creation become his prized possession for someone who needed to hear this, you are God's most prized possession. He took time to create you. So if you ever think for a split second that your life is nothing, you don't have anybody, God has always been there. And I don't know who needed to hear that word, but God has always been there. You are not an accident. You are not a mistake. You are here for a reason. You may not know what that reason is, but the amazing thing is God does. And he is just ready to make that will manifested in your life. You just have to be open to it. And don't believe what anyone else says. Don't believe that because you don't have this or you're not driving this car, you're not uh, wearing this brand. Don't believe that. Don't believe just because you're not doing a certain thing that you're a mistake. Please do not believe that. You are here for a purpose and other people are just set to take you down. But always remember that God is always on your side and God treats you like his prized possession. Like you are a son, like you are a daughter of the most high God. Verse 19 says, understand this, my brothers and sisters, you must all be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to get angry. That messes with a lot of people. Uh, what's your thoughts on that, Caitlin? Well, I would say, I know I say this a lot. I would say that it's much easier said than done. We can always try to do something, but we forget to ask for help from God. And we think we can do it on our own. And we fall even harder because we need to be reminded that we cannot do a doggone thing by ourselves. You know, right. <laughs> so I feel like that's the most important thing to remember. It doesn't matter how strong you may think you are, how many muscles you may think you have, yeah, yeah. all right, or how smart you think you are, yeah. all right, you still need help. <laughs> no matter what you think you can handle, trust me, you, you really can't handle it. And you will be knocked down a few pegs if need be. Trust me, that's not the situation you want to be in. <laughs> you're right, you're right. Um, I've heard one pastor say it doesn't matter, you know, how many times you've gone to church, it doesn't matter, you know, how many times you've gone to AY, how many Pathfinder meetings you've been in. It don't matter if you um no matter how many uh veggie links you eat, no matter, you know, how many times, you know, you can praise the Lord, no matter how many hymns you know in the Bible, you know, if you aren't uh slow to, to speak, if you aren't slow to anger then it, like Kaylin said, you're going to get knocked down a couple of pegs. And trust me, it's not the best position to be in. You know, you have a lot of people who will think highly of themselves and will be like, yeah, you know, um, oh, I, I don't, that's not me. You know, I, I'm definitely slow to anger. I, I'm definitely slow to, uh, slow to speak, you know. So just always be mindful that it doesn't matter who you are, you are in desperate need of the Lord's help. Just always make sure to keep that in mind. Um, we're almost done. We're, we're, we're kind of running out of time. So we may definitely have to do a part two to this because I'm, re I'm really enjoying uh, this, this chapter. But verse 22 says, don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise you are only fooling yourselves. If you listen to the word and don't obey, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself walk away and forget what you look like. 
But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free and you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. Verse 26 and 27 says, if you claim to be religious, but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself and your religion is worthless. Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God, the father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. I read this and I let out a breath. I didn't know I was holding in because it's so often that people claim religion, but don't claim gospel. It's so often that people claim religion, don't claim gospel. And basically they'll use religion as a, a opportunity to beat people over the head. And I'm not saying religion is wrong, but what I'm saying is do not use religion as an opportunity to step on people. Do not use religion to step on people. If you are using your religion, if you are claiming religion, but you are not acting as if you are a child of God, you're only fooling yourself. Because the amazing thing is people can tell what kind of person you are. People can tell what kind of person you are by your actions. You can talk all you want to. I can say, yeah, you know, I'm healthy. I go to the gym, you know, I work out. But if you sit, see me sitting somewhere, you know, drinking soda, you know, eating uh, eating chips or candy, what's that What's that telling you? I don't work out, you know? Like, it, it it's ridiculous to have people talk a big game, but walk a, a way smaller walk or not even walk it at all. Um, what's your thoughts on that as we wrap up? You know, I would say I do have a confession because I just felt a bit uh, oh, guilty. Okay. So uh, one of my issues, I I have a I have a huge passion for everything involving youth ministries. I am not perfect. I am. I will tell you real quick. I am not perfect, and I tell a lot of people in the ministries I'm involved in what I struggle with, so they also know that I am human, that I still have my own issues. Yeah. You know, and I have dark humor, right? <laughs> so that is one of the things that some people think is weird. But when you get, I'm still a genuine person. Yeah. It's just because my sense of humor is a bit different than other people. I will say some off the wall stuff. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. But, you know, Jesus is still working on me. I'm not in denial. Okay. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm a Christian, but I'm not one in denial. I know I'm a heathen. I'm still working. He's still working. Still working. <laughs> okay. Still working. She said he's still working on me. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not done cooking yet. He he, he still got a couple of things to, to work with me on, and that's that's the the awesome thing about it. You know, a lot of people won't claim what you just claimed. A lot of people will act like they are perfect in the sight of the Lord. There are people who you know who, like I said, they they talk perfection. They talk perfection and the crazy reality of it is they can talk something but it's by their walk it's by what they'll say it's by how they react to certain things where you're just sitting there like really but i thought you know you said that you know you were a christian you said this and you said that but you're so quick you know to get angry you're so quick to handle situation you know off base uh without taking it to god in prayer you're so quick to you know do the opposite of what you claim you are and it's so important for us as brothers and sisters and children of the most high God to not only talk religion, not only talk Christianity, but exercise it. And in the end, if we don't, the only person we're fooling is ourselves. Well, that is it for now. We are definitely going to come back with a part two because like I said, I enjoyed this. But Kaylin, just any, any closing thoughts, any uh, remarks you want to add? I want to say that once again, it's really important that we do stay in our word. Bible study is important. And the moment where you don't feel like praying, the moment you don't feel like going to church, the moment you don't feel like going to Bible study, anything, that is the number one time that you need to be doing it. Because there's a reason that you're feeling that way. And not to feel like Jesus and God is disappointed in you and they're going to just toss you to the side. No matter what you do, he's still going to be here for you. 
the people that are surrounding you will still support you. There is nothing wrong with that. You need people to confide in. You need people that you can pray with. And you just need to remember to stay strong and remember no matter what that nothing's going to happen that will make him not love you. Amen. That that's that's the word of the day right there. No matter the amazing thing about this is no matter, you know, the I won't say the rebuke, well the rebuke, I'll say. You know, if this um touched your I know it touched me cuz I know there's some things in this chapter alone that I'm working on. But the amazing thing about all of this is is that we serve a serve a God that no matter what we've done, if we go to him earnestly in prayer, we earnestly ask for forgiveness, God is willing to forgive us. But we just have to make sure that we do our own part. We have to make sure that, you know, we uh, ask forgiveness and we strive to not commit these sins again. Once again, Kaylin, it's been an honor to have you. Um, we appreciate you joining our team. Um, once again, guys, thank you so much for your support. Um, shout out to our tech manager, uh, Emmanuel. Um, he's come, He's going to come on and he's serving as our tech manager. So we are grateful uh, to have him a part of this team. Um, once again, guys, I am Bryce James. Thank you guys for uh, tuning in and we will see you next time.